what do you understand by test execution or executing the test cases? What do you usually do in that phase? So, while doing the course, we have gone through one project, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, Orange HRM project was there. Mm -hmm. yeah. In that project, we used uh, for uh, writing test cases, we used the test link tool. Mm -hmm. So in that, we first created a suite for uh, the test whatever the test cases are there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And inside that, we are writing test cases for each and everything, like for ID, for password, mm -hmm. and after that login button. So we are writing test cases over there. Mm -hmm. And after that, we are matching the expected result and actual result. Right. If the expected result and actual result are really matching, then that test case should be passed. Mm -hmm. And if that not matching, then it will go to the passed or failed. Failed, yeah. Okay. So basically, in the execution phase, usually whatever test cases you have documented in the test link tool, you use to basically execute those. So basically, there is a cycle that you create, run it, and if expected is matches actual result, then you pass it, otherwise you fail it. Yes. So basically, you actually launch the application. So you can add this point as well. Like in execution phase, you actually launch the application and then perform the real steps on the application. So for example, orange HRM that you mentioned, right? CRM tool. So you launch orange CRM and then you perform. So for example, if it is a login test, so you provide username, password, clicked on login button and verified whether login was successful. If successful, then you pass it. So that's what you do in execution phase, right? So everywhere, it doesn't matter how complex the project is. This is what you're going to do in the execution, right? Okay, great. So your understanding around execution is okay. What do you understand by testing and did they explain you what testing is all about? So about testing, we just know that about uh, how to create the test suite inside that mm -hmm. and how to write the test cases. That's it. Right. Uh, whatever the test planning and uh, other things are, uh, they said that nothing our job. That's why I don't understand the other part. But mm -hmm. I know how to write test cases and how to execute it. Right. Okay. Okay. That's, um, yeah, that, that shouldn't, that's hard. I mean, I, I, I don't recommend that they should be doing it, that it's not your job, but uh, at least uh, from the tool perspective, they should have given you a brief overview. So oh, test link I just know about how to, how to how write. To write. Yeah, that's what you will be doing initially, but then yeah. understanding. So test link is a test management tool, which is uh, open source. Yeah. So it's free of cost available. And it's very simple. All of those test management tool will be basically similar sort of functionality. So you'll have test case repository. So you write all the test cases structure wise, you can create folders and manage all your test cases. Then you create cycles, add those test cases in test cycle and execute those. So when we said test cycle, have they explained you anything about the test cycle? Why do we create cycles, test cycles? No, no idea. Okay. okay. So usually say, for example, I, as a team, we started building something, okay? And after three weeks, there is a, some code that will be deployed, all right? So once that code is deployed, the version it's, say for example, version one, two, three, four, five, all right? Now you create a test cycle to test whatever has been implemented in that version one, two, three, four, five. So in that test cycle, you pull all the test cases that are relevant to that cycle and you execute so that there is a bit of tagging, right? Otherwise, if you don't have the cycle, don't have the version. So how would you know that after three weeks, there is another build, okay, or another version? right? Like in the apps, in your phone apps, you see different versions, right? So against which version did you test? So that's where these cycles help, test cycles help so that you can track that correlation. And then there is a lot of other things that you can mention the build number in the test case when you have that cycle. So you can have build and release numbers. That's good. Uh, that's okay. This is a bit of advanced thing. You will understand that when you get into the job. That's okay. How did you use Jira in the institute? Jira, it is specifically for the defect management. Okay, so okay, yeah, they used it for whatever, defect management. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So inside it, in testing, whatever the defect I found, mm -hmm. that defect I recalled in, in Jira, mm -hmm. and whatever the ID of that defect, I should check that inside it, and it is it should send to the developer whatever the defect is there, he will be correct it and uh, send me. The process is like whenever I am putting that that is a defect, then it should be a new. So that when it is in progress, so uh, the developer was working it. And after that, it will come to me to recheck again. Mm -hmm. 
after retesting it i should close that status because uh, if it is matching with my expected result mm -hmm. with an actual result then uh, i should close it otherwise i should talk with my supervisor mm -hmm. or else can request to developer to means re correct it right so basically reopen if it is not working and reassign it yeah okay great so basically jira is not only just effect management tool it's much more it's an agile project management tool but we don't want to get, get into those details but jira has built in defect management which you have used so as a software tester you would be sort of using jira for the same activity okay